2016 will go down as the hottest year on record, and the North and South Poles can't handle the heat. Climate scientists say polar sea ice the size of India has disappeared. That's about as big as two Alaskas. Now the amount of sea ice at the poles is at a record low for the season. CBS News contributor and theoretical physicist Dr. Michio Kaku joins me now. It's nice to see you. Thanks for mm -hmm. being here. All right. So first of all, let's just start with explaining what sea ice is and why this is so significant, the melting of it. Well, if you're thinking about buying beachfront property anytime soon, you may want to think twice because sea levels are going to start to rise for two reasons. First of all, the earth is heating up, as you said, and water expands when it gets warmer. That causes sea level rise. But second of all, and this new study is quite, quite damaging, the size of the north and polar cap regions are shrinking shrinking to the tune of twice the size of Alaska. And that water has to go someplace. Mm -hmm. And it's going to wind up in somebody's, somebody's living room in the future. In fact, it's projected that in the coming decades, sea levels could rise maybe three feet, perhaps maybe even 10 feet by the end of the century. Where we are standing right now could be underwater. In less than half a century. Uh, that's right. Again, these numbers depend upon which computer studies you use, which assumptions you make. Mm -hmm. But most of the studies are converging on the fact that A, the Earth is heating up, B, the ice caps are beginning to melt and crack, even the South Pole is beginning to crack, and three, that means that water's got to go someplace and it could wind up in someone's living room. Let me read you this, this statistic because I think this is staggering. The National Snow and Ice Data Center says the amount of sea ice at the poles is almost 1.5 million square miles less than its 1981-2010 average. So did it just melt really quickly in the past few years? Are we just noticing this now? Uh, well, if you take a look at submarines that went to the North Pole 50 years ago, like the Nautilus, and then compare it with the results of today, we find that the ice has actually decreased by 50 percent in the last 50 years. Uh, I mean, think about that. That means that in, in our lifetime, we're actually seeing the melting of the polar ice region. And by satellites, you can see that in uh, summer times, there is no more north polar ice caps. Right. And so uh, kids in the future will say that Santa Claus is obviously a myth because there is no north pole for Santa Claus to live and make all the toys. How about the area around the South Pole? Because it has steadily been getting warmer, but there was a time when it was getting colder. What happened? That's right. Some of the skeptics say, bah, humbug. Look at the South Polar region. It's actually getting colder, not warmer. But we think we know the reason why. There is the polar vortex. That is a hurricane, literally a cold hurricane over the North Pole and the South Pole. And we think that the polar vortex in the South Pole prevented warmer air from coming in. And that's temporary, because okay. now even the South Pole is beginning to look like the North Pole, i.e. it's beginning to get smaller and temperatures are rising just as we would expect. So what does that mean for the rest of the world if the South Pole continues to get warmer? First of all, it means that storms are going to be much more severe. The latest study I sh saw shows that the ferocity of storms could be five times, five times what it has been historically. So think of the worst storm of the past year. The worst storm, multiply that by five. And that's what winters are going to be like. Second of all, if you're near the oceans, and even though you don't have a hurricane, simple storms and nor'easters could throw water paralyzing the subway system, paralyzing mass transit. So even if your city is above water, it means that water could definitely overflow into your living room in case there's a very bad storm, which will be more fierce and more common in the future. So the so-called 100-year storms, right. we're going to see them much more frequently. Is any of this alarming to you or just something that scientists have been warning of for a long time? Well, you know, I used to be a skeptic. I used to say, come on, hum humbug. The earth is so big, we're so small. How can humans constantly change the weather? But it's happening now in our lifetimes. All the indicators are pointing up, showing that temperatures are rising, uh, glaciers are receding. Summertime is a week longer than normal. Every farmer knows that. Mosquitoes are going north because of the heating of the, of, of the planet Earth. So it means that tropical diseases are also going to spread north. All the indicators are going northward. So and that's why, that, right? Yeah, that's why I stopped being a skeptic and I begin to realize that human activity really is driving this, this global warming. All right. Such staggering statistics, all of it. Thank you so much, Dr. Michio Kaku. Thanks mm -hmm. for being here. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.